What can we expect from tonight's State of the Union address? Let's ask a former presidential speech writer. He's Peter Robinson. He joins us now from the Hoover Institution in California. Thanks for being there, Peter. Simon, my pleasure. So you've written these speeches. Um, what goes into writing one of these? The State of the Union address is the one speech that each year represents a kind of discipline on the entire federal government. The speech writing shop, I'm describing the process in the Reagan years, but it takes place, has taken place in every administration since in roughly the same form, including the Obama administration. The speech writers get in touch with cabinet secretaries, agency heads, every responsible figure in the federal government, and ask what they'd like in the speech. They then draft material, send it in, the speech writers read it carefully, and then they shove it to one side and write the speech that the president wants. Now, that's not quite as cavalier as it sounds because important issues will have come up in reading through this material. Cabinet secretaries will have called the chief of staff and said, I really want you to look at this paragraph. Some sense of importance and intensity in the, in the government will be conveyed to the White House. But in the end, after canvassing the federal government, it's the job of the speechwriters to, to put it aside and work with the president to describe the agenda that he wants to establish for the coming year. Now, obviously, um that, that's important, the agenda, but you also get breaking news items like we, we now know that uh, North Korea has tested yet another nuclear bomb. Do you think the president is going to address that? So obviously, that's of some concern to folks. Absolutely right. Well, that, that's part and parcel of what it is to be a White House speechwriter. You can, my first day on the job was the day that we invaded Grenada. And he, the president, President Reagan, was delivering a speech that evening in Dallas, of all places. I re rewrote the speech half a dozen times during the day as the information came in about how things were going in Grenada. In the end, the president decided he couldn't leave the White House with troops deployed. But that, that actually is, well, you work at a newspaper. Breaking news is, is something people can handle. You get a paragraph, you figure out where to put it, you make sure the president has time to look it over. No problem. Do, do you have any clue about what he'll say about Korea? Uh, do I have a clue? I do not have a clue. Okay. I will be very curious to hear what he says about Korea. Because, of course, it, it fits right into the whole budget question. We've got the sequester looking more and more likely. If the sequester does happen, the Pentagon, which is expecting to be able to spend $600 billion over the next fiscal year, will find itself with $486 billion, I believe is the correct number, to spend. In other words, a very sharp cut in Pentagon spending. Outgoing Defense Secretary, President Obama's own outgoing Defense Secretary, Leon Panetta, essentially begged Congress not to let it happen. Okay. Incoming okay. Defense Secretary, if he gets the votes and is confirmed, Chuck Hagel, gave a strange, meandering, I felt, I think the consensus is, a very unsatisfying testimony. And now the Koreans have tested a third nuclear weapon. I, I, like you, like every sentient person in the country, wants to know what the president intends to do about this. Well, I'm sure the White House is watching now, and I'm sure they will craft a uh, paragraph just for you. Thank you very much, uh, Peter yeah, Robinson of uh, the Hoover Institution. We appreciate your time.